Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to take a look at recursion. So recursion is when a function calls itself directly or indirectly. So here I've got a couple sets of code. So here's the first one and here's the second one. So in the first one here, we have a direct call to itself, meaning that the function c, so func c, first line here is calling func c. So func c calls itself from within itself. This is an example of a direct call, recursion. In this second little code block here, I've got func b, func a, and then a call to func a. So when I call func a here, func a is invoked, it calls func b, func b is invoked, it calls func a. So you can see here now we kind of enter this uh, infinite loop almost of func b calling func a and func b, or func a calling func b, right? So it's indirectly calling itself from the function that it calls here. So these are kind of two examples. So if you were to try to run this code as it is, you'll see here that maximum recursion depth exceeded. So I tried to do this 996 times and basically said I got tired and didn't want to do it anymore. So it blew up. So the reason for that is because recursion requires what's known as a base case. So a base case is what tells recursion to stop recursing and start going the other way. And what that means is, let me go ahead and comment this out and then I'll show it to you here on the debugger. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the debugger. So here, the code is stopped mid-execution right here. So notice here on our call stack, we have sample pi line 10, sample pi line seven. And that's where the program is currently stopped. So I'm just gonna hit this play button a couple of times. And notice here, pi seven, pi seven, pi seven. So what's happening here is the memory in your computer is being used to stack up these calls. So this is recursion adding more and more and more to your call stack. So as I continue doing this, this will continue to grow, 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 and until eventually the code says, all right, after 996 times, I'm not doing this anymore. And then I'm gonna blow up. And then this is kind of the debugger letting me know an exception happened. So to make a base case, there has to be something that says stop doing that, stop adding uh, calls to the call stack. So what we can do here is something simple. We'll just say uh, five. I'll pass five as a parameter or an argument. And then we'll just accept n as a parameter. So here I'm gonna say if n is less than or equal to zero, return, right? Otherwise, go ahead and call func c again. But this time, I'm gonna say n minus one. So basically every time that n is greater than zero, right, it'll call func c again with n minus one, meaning that n will decrement, right? So meaning uh, subtract one from itself each time. So now if I run it, Notice here, the code runs successfully. I get an exit code of zero. That's because it didn't have to recurse more than the five times that would have I passed in here. So we can do something similar with the indirect call. So let me go ahead and comment this out and re-comment this back in. So here, uh, let's just say I'll pass five again as a argument. I will take n here and then we can do something similar. So if n is less than or equal to zero, return. Otherwise, we're gonna call func b. And in this case, I'll say func b is just n. So func b now will receive a, par a parameter and I'll call this something different. Let's just say it's z. So if z is less than or equal to zero, return. Otherwise, call A again with Z minus one. So if we run this, you'll see again that we can run the code to completion, exit code zero. That's because we start at five, and as we traverse through this code, right, the number will decrement by one each time this, this little loop of func A, func B runs until eventually it meets the base cases. So now let's move on to a kind of a harder example here. So Fibonacci is a, I call it like a, it's like a math formula, but I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. But anyways, 
It's basically the sum of the previous two numbers together to equal the current number. So if you were to write it out, it'd be something like 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc., etc., right? So 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 3 is 5, etc., etc., etc. So here is a sample code that kind of does that or kind of implements that. So here we can see that I have a function called fib, and it takes n as a parameter. My base case is if n is less than or equal to 1, return n. Otherwise, return fib n minus 1, so there's the first recursive call, plus fib of n minus 2, so a second recursive call. So if I were to run this with 5, so counting out here out loud, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that means that 5 should produce an output of 5. Let's go ahead and run this. And it does. Okay, so let's continue testing this. So if I say 6, for example, that means the next number should be 8. And it is. So now, this might be a little tough to understand here, kind of just through code. So let's take a look at a image. So at the start of our code of Fibonacci, n is equal to 5. Well, now we have a left and a right branch. And these are going to be basically the paths that the left or the n minus 1 and the right which is going to be the n minus 2 are going to take. So if I traverse to the left notice here that n is now equal to 4 right because now I've called the fib passing in n minus 1 which is now 4. If I go to the left again n minus 1 is 3 left again n minus 1 is 2 left again n minus 1 is 1 that's a base case so all the base cases here are red, just to highlight that they're base cases. So we stop recursing and go back up the call stack. So as we go back up, we're going to start going to the right. So we're going to, let's say we made it all the way to the left here in this example, so we made it down to this one. So as we go back up, we're going to say, okay, can we go right? Yes. So base case of zero. Okay, so back up, back up. And then we're going to go to the right again. Base case of one. Okay, back up, back up to the right n minus 2, so left here is 1, right is 0, back up, back up, and then we're back up here, going to the right side now, so 3, then to the left again, so 2, to the left again is 1, back up to the right, 0, back up, back up, to the right, we got 1. So basically every time the left recursive call happens, we're going to do n minus 1. And every time the right call happens, we're going to do n minus 2. And that's kind of what's demonstrated in this little diagram here. So now to determine what your answer is, right, all you have to do is add up all of the base cases. So here it's going to be 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1. So the zeros obviously don't add to the total sum, but in this case the ones will. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when n is equal to 5, the output is going to be 5, which we saw here when we ran this. So that was a quick overview of recursion. Uh, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know if you have questions.